Good evening. Welcome to First Apostolic Church of Aurora. I'm Lead Pastor Brent Kauf up here with our daily devotion. I want to jump back onto sort of the thought that I left with you on Wednesday night when we talked about uh, addiction and habits and how uh, there is this battle between the flesh and the spirit, but there's also areas that we just struggle with. It's not necessarily a uh, sin. Maybe it's not our best self, or maybe it just undermines the goals that we have in life. For instance, saving money to, to buy a house and habits can keep us from living our best life or fulfilling our dreams. And so I, I want to be clear that it is a broad spectrum of what we're talking about when we talk about habits and our behaviors. Uh, the majority of people sort of scoff at New Year's resolutions, primarily because we've been in that condition before. We've tried to change, and we've tried to do it by willpower. That January 1st, I'm going to live differently. I'm going to make changes in my life. And I, I say to anybody who's trying to make changes that are beneficial, positive, good job. Keep trying. No matter what your track record has been, no matter how you've struggled with it, don't give up. Keep trying. We don't want to settle for where we're at and be complacent. And so I'm not one of those who scoffs any kind of resolution or any kind of desire to do better because I think in life we struggle with change and changing who we are and becoming uh, the best version of our, what, what psychologists would say, our true self. And in the context of, of Christianity and understanding of God, God's will and plan for our life. But many times what takes place there is what we call white knuckle change. And white knuckle change is when we try to change behavior without addressing the system or the root cause of behavior. And white knuckle change is exactly what it looks like, that you're trying so hard that when someone would maybe grip something and they're so determined, they're trying to do it with their will, they grip it so tight that their knuckles would turn white. And so it's sort of an act of will. It's sort of an act of determination. And there are changes that can take place with white knuckle change. I've seen it happen. I've seen people who made changes by pure grit and determination. They made changes. However, there's a lot of times where continuing changes and even deeper changes are more difficult and require more than just our will and determination. Uh, there's a book called Change or Die, and they discover that most people have the ability of change, but they don't because it's exceptionally hard to make life changes. And many times our efforts, they would, would find out, are doomed to failure when we try to do it by ourselves or on our own. And this is why people have research partners or workout partners, and that's why we have prayer partners, people that we link up with. Uh, research says that most people do fall off a New Year's resolution by February 14th, um, a month and a half. Of course, February 14th, I wonder why the day of chocolate and wonderful uh, romantic dinners. But they went on to say that people have the ability to change when uh, in a moment, it's not that change is difficult, but following through can be a challenge. For instance, Dr. Edward Miller, the Dean of the Medical Faculty at John Hopkins University School of Medicine said that 70% of coronary artery bypass patients they change in a moment, but they revert back to unhealthy habits within two years of their operation and began to show this, that, again, this happens with dieters. The National Institute of Health said that two-thirds of dieters gain back any lost weight within a year. Uh, that, that happened personally in my life. It's sort of embarrassing uh, to talk about, to share, but at one time, I first time I realized I needed to lose weight in a moment, I, I lost 60 pounds and I felt really good about myself. And, and then I told myself I owed it to myself to, to maybe have an extra dessert. And I relaxed and I took it easy and I gained back the weight and more. And uh, it's, it's a shameful thing for us to acknowledge. And it's embarrassing. We hate that. But this is many times a pattern that takes place, whether it's heart surgery or losing weight or other things in our life that, that we can struggle with. And so we have to realize when it comes to making changes and changes in our life, that there is not just the behavior, the physical part of the activity that we're doing, but we have to understand our emotional being and we have to understand our spiritual component and our, our thoughts we are holistically made. We're not just these 
we're not just animals that that behave in a certain way. We have nothing to do with our behavior. It's sort of programmed into us. We're robots. Well, that, that's not who we are as people. God created us holistically. And to understand that, we have to understand there's this emotional part, how we feel. There is this mental part, logic and reasoning that all affect one another and affect our behaviors altogether. In fact, a study of psychology that I feel like really aligns itself with Christianity and the Word of God is cognitive behavioral psychology. And what cognitive behavioral psychology is, it started out as just behavioral psychology, trying to change behaviors based on rewards and punishment, reward and punishment. We probably know those conditional response and and uh, we've seen the experiments of dogs and bells and saliva and food, and, and, and we've studied that in school, behavior uh, and conditioned response. But we understood that we're more complex than that, and they understood that there is this way that our thoughts direct our, our behaviors. Not just physically, that if we disconnect our brain from our body, it doesn't work, but also figuratively in a sense that it is an influence beyond just the mechanics of behavior. But our thoughts affect how we act. It affects the expro expressions on our, our face. Uh, that's why a conversation, it's very dangerous to have detailed conversations on the phone or through text messages because we miss so much of communication that takes place beyond just the words that are spoken, but the cues that are revealed by our face and our expressions. And so they understood that. We need to to pay attention to our thoughts. And, and the scripture over and over again talks about what's over man thinks, you know, so is he, and, and this connection between our thoughts and our behaviors. But they went a step farther and found out that emotions, how we feel, affects our thinking and our behaviors. And all of us know what it is like to, to respond because of how we feel about something, whether it's enthusiastically or depressed or discouraged, how it affects our thoughts, how we think about ourselves, how we think about the world in general. If emotionally we are down, we can feel like the sky is falling and, and we act accordingly. If emotionally we are up, we can have uh, hope and, and we can act accordingly as well. So it is all interconnected. And then as, as Christians, we understand that there is even something more important than that and a greater part than that. And that is the Spirit of God, that we have power in the Spirit that we need to lean on. And we talked about that some Wednesday night. I want to talk about that again in the future, but I want to wrap up tonight because I want to be aware of your time and talking about how our emotions affect our behaviors. Sometimes we have a great plan in our mind of what we want to do. And then we start working out that plan, but somewhere between our thoughts and the vision we have and its reality, we either fall back to what we were or it never gets accomplished. Let me talk to you about the rider and the elephant. Um, this is a, an important illustration, I think, and we've, we've been talking about elephants. Um, there are some studies that, that they refer to the elephant as our emotional being, and then they refer to our, our mind as our, our mental being. And that many times what happens is we have great plans, good intentions, maybe we would say, we have the ability to physically carry out things, but our emotions keep us from living out and bearing that out. One of the ways that the rider and the elephant take place is they would say that the rider, our mind, tries to control our emotions, but our rider wears down as the day goes along. That the rider, many times in the morning, he's fresh, he's had a good night's sleep, and, and man, he starts out the day good, but as the day goes on, this tug of war with this beast, our our emotions, which are so strong and powerful, we wear down to where sometimes the strength we had in the morning, the willpower we had in the morning, we don't have that willpower at, say, 7, 8 o'clock at night. Many times, and I'm just going to use myself as an example, I can start out the day eating right, exercising, doing the things I want to do, but man, it seems like in the evening, I'm ready for that snack, maybe that ice cream or Doritos or, or what have you. And it is that we wear down as time goes on. Psychologists say that self-control is an exhaustible resource. It's almost like doing bench presses or exercises at the gym. And, and we've seen this even in our services and illustrations. My mind goes back to a, a, a silver where Brother Owen Davis was using an illustration that the first repetition or the beginning of the behavior is easy, but time 
begins to wear on us. So maybe you go to the gym and you just get a 45 pound bar. There's no weight on it. And you are just bench pressing the bar and you think, man, this is easy. And you're pumping out repetitions, but there is going to come a time where your strength is going to start where your, your muscles are no longer fresh. They're more exhausted until it can get to the place where you exercise to exhaustion, meaning you can't lift the bar anymore. Psychologists say this many times is what change happens with change initiatives, is that we start out, we have good intentions, we have a good plan, we've got good thoughts. Emotionally, we're excited about it, and behaviorally, we can do it. But as time goes on, we start getting tired, emotionally tired, sometimes mentally tired, and then we fall off the proverbial wagon. I, I want to finish up in, in this devotion by saying this. We need to realize that refreshing ourselves is critical to change in our life. And refreshing in the spirit is, is critical for any kind of significant change, spiritual change, behavioral change, a deep change in our hearts. And I'm not talking about just changing the type of drink, your, your favorite soft drink. I'm talking about deep change behaviors, attitudes in our life. It takes that commitment. So I want to encourage you as you continue to look at uh, maybe the struggles we have in life or habits that we might struggle with and changes that we want to make, that yes, get a good plan. Um, uh, inspire yourself. Think of the reasons why you want to make that change, uh, important reasons. Maybe it has to do with your marriage or your family, your children, the future, uh, great things that, that inspire you and start living that out. But understand you're going to get tired along the journey. Or maybe you've just started living for God. And, and when you were repentant or baptized and filled with the Spirit, there was such a passion and excitement to live for God. But you're beyond that, that honeymoon phase, and you're feeling the, the, the daily grind of, of living for God. And it, it is a daily grind in the sense that every day we have to die, as Paul says. And so uh, that doesn't seem pleasant. Dying doesn't seem pleasant. Paul says, no, this is a, a discipline as well. And so we need to keep ourselves refreshed. The Spirit of the Lord is, is what refreshes us. And it, it, His Spirit, it, through His Word, through prayer, these daily disciplines we talk about, the reason they're critical to take place on a daily basis is that they are the ones that keep us fresh and strong, that we can make the changes and make the advances that we want to make. So on this segment, I hope to continue maybe talking about this a little bit as we are looking about how we want to grow in the image of the stature of Christ, how we want to be our best self, our true self, how we want to be the best for our, our, our families. Let, let me tell you, to have a plan is great. To inspire yourself with the reasons why is great, but making sure you stay refreshed is going to be critical. That's what rest is for, recreation, to recreate, refreshing ourselves. We can't uh, work, you know, every day, you know, 16 hours a day, every day without our bodies breaking down. It needs a refreshing. And that's really what recreation and hobbies were. We sort of make it, made gods out of recreation, sports, and hobbies. But originally, it was designed to refresh us, to get out and do something different, something relaxing, that when we came back to important, significant things, we would be renewed. So I want to challenge you to do that as well. The uh, man was not made for the Sabbath. Sabbath was made for men. We need renewal. We need refreshing to take place in our life. And it comes from that. It comes from getting good sleep, good rest. It comes from the Word of God through prayer. Make sure these core components are a part of your life. And then the change initiatives you start, whether it's spiritual, it's about sin and righteousness, or whether it's about something that you want to do for the future, buying a home or, or buying a car and saving money or living in a budget. All of those things are possible. You do not have to go back with keeping yourself refreshed and renewed along the journey. I hope that something I've said tonight has been a blessing to you. will help you out on your journey. We love you very much at First Apostolic Church. Can't wait to be a part of our upcoming services on Sunday, Mother's Day, and we celebrate that. We want to be thankful for our, our mothers uh, and, and just hate that we can't get together to honor them personally, but uh, we, we will honor them. It'll just be in a unique way this year that we'll never forget. So we love you. Look forward to seeing you then. Continue to be engaged in our devotions, and uh, Saturday, of course, will be the interview, so that's, uh, that's a fantastic thing to hear the testimony of those who God is working in and who are going forward in Jesus' name. From my house to yours, we love you very much. God bless you. We'll see you soon.